Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 6 of the United States Navy vs. Neater. That's right, I'm back. Been gone a while, but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I can continue this series. And uh, before I get started today, so today we're going to be taking on the Lightning Hoods. Um, and uh, one of the first things we're going to have to do is blunt the immediate massive attack that they're throwing at us. So I'm going to start off today in designer mode with two new craft, and uh, for those of you who um, haven't seen it, uh, here we have a missile cruiser, uh, a legendary missile cruiser. This is the USS Albany, and of course there's uh, this guy over here that we'll get to that in a second. But I did do a speed build video on this, so... If you haven't seen the video, I'll just go over it real quick, as usual. Um, but yeah, do check out the video if you want more in-depth on how this thing was built. Uh, starting from the front, so this is on a... An, this is... The Albany was an Oregon City-class heavy cruiser. So this is on a heavy cruiser hull. She is well-armored. She has... Uh, what I do? She has four meters of armor, although one of the layers is poles, but still basically four meters of armor protecting her uh vital citadel components which is quite decent quite good so she should be a bit a bit tankier than the destroyers we've using so at the front she has so she's equipped with four talos missiles two at the front two at the back these are large thump remote guided missiles they're explosive frag um i believe i set up the frag to be it's not really a frag penetrator warhead, but explosive frag, generally these should do a lot of damage. They're decently fast, but they're pretty durable too. And they're remote guided, so they won't be affected by flares and stuff. And these are her main anti-ship weapons. And actually, each launcher actually has four missiles in it. Because the 33 second reload on these is kind of long. So there's another set of missiles that are spin clipped into these missiles using a piston which will fire 15 seconds after these. So it appears as if these missiles are actually just reloading quickly, but no, there's there's four missiles on this launcher. Uh, anyways, moving further back, she's got her tra uh, targeting radars for the missiles, as well as various other targeting radars. She's got her bridge, which is incredibly ridiculously tall. Um, I made jokes about this during the speed build video and during every other episode, but once again, Navy was they, they were like, do we want a funnel or a mast? And they want, they want funnel here. So, I mean, I guess she has a kind of a mast, but no proper mast, just a tall-ass funnel. So, very tall funnels, very tall superstructure, massively tall bridge. As we move on back, she's got these, uh... Tartar, there you go. Uh, Tartar anti-air missiles. In real life, these were also semi-active radar homing, just like the... the Talos missiles up front. I've decided to go with infrared though, just to give these, I don't know, remote guidance doesn't work well against aircraft and from the depths, so remote guided. She's got two of these per side. These aren't spin clipped or anything, but they should, they're, they're decently fast, fairly maneuverable. Um, they should be okay against aircraft. Not insane, but hopefully they'll, they'll be at least something. Then she's got the triple anti-submarine warfare torpedoes that pretty much every ship has had that I've built so far. She's got three of them per side. She's got the eight-barreled anti-submarine rocket launcher amidships uh, that's also presence on the Knox and the Spruance. Um, something else, uh, I haven't verified this yet, but I'm pretty sure this is true. I'll go look it up if I need to use it. But uh, now I'm forgetting his name. Someone left a comment that basically said these anti-submarine rocket launchers could fire harpoons in a pinch. They could be loaded with harpoons. So, I don't know, if I ever need to make like a, a more anti-ship variant of of this, or of any of my other ships that have this, uh, this, this has the ability to fire harpoons, which I didn't know that. That's really cool. Moving on back, she has two 5-inch guns. These are... I don't know, not great, but they're something. They fire at 46 RPM, um, which is an insanely high. But I went for two meter shells here. So they do have a bit more firepower than uh, they would if they were just doing, you know, short little one meter shells. 
so decently powerful. I'll go into, uh, here's the layout of the internals and stuff, by the way. Once again, all of her important bits are hidden safely below the waterline, where they will not get hit. And, of course, they're protected by the 4-meter-thick belt armor. And then as we move to the stern, she has the aft Talos launcher, and then she does have a helipad, but she doesn't have a hangar, so I haven't equipped her with any helicopters just because there wasn't a realistic way to store them, really, other than just have them sit out on the deck through all the weather and everything. So, no helicopter, but that should be fine. In real life, she was more of an anti-aircraft vessel, and I think in From the Depths, against at least large aircraft and thruster craft, she'll be able to fulfill that well pretty well. Well, fulfill that role pretty well. Um, and then also, I mean, against the lightning hoods, being an all-missile ship isn't ideal. Uh, obviously, they like to use their lasers and they like their lands. But these, these Talos missiles are pretty durable, so she should be okay. So anyways, that's the Albany. Uh, and then right over here, we have the second ship. Or I should say boat, because submarines aren't actually ships, they're boats. But this is the USS Los Angeles. This is a Los Angeles-class nuclear attack sub. And in real life, these things were menaces. But in From the Depths, we'll, we'll have to see. So I did it. I was tempted to make her out of rubber for stealth. But honestly, she's so large. And she has so many... I don't know. She's so large that her, her sonar signature would still be decent. So I... I think it's better off to just go for all metal construction and make her a bit tanky so that hopefully when she's if she's attacked by medium and small torpedoes she should just be able to shrug off the damage. Um, she's only 100k and honestly this is a bit expensive for what she is mostly because I went with nuclear power. So the, you can see it's, it's in this rubber box. So maybe, maybe if I say show import components only, nah, that, that doesn't do. Anyways, you'll just have to trust me on this, and the, the little tool tip that pops up here. She's totally RTG powered, <coughs> so she can operate pretty much indefinitely, as long as she has materials for ammunition. Uh, I guess that's her limiting factor. But RTG powered, she'll operate pretty much indefinitely. She can hit 15 meters per second, which isn't insane, but, I mean, submarines aren't that fast. And uh, as far as her weaponry goes, she's got four torpedoes on the front. These are medium torpedoes, but they are pretty long. Uh, very long, actually. So sonar-guided medium torpedoes with a whole lot of explosives. And they do have magnets in here. These are kind of... Um, I'm going to see how well these work. These are, I guess, belly rub torpedoes. They... They travel a lot deeper than the hulls of most ships, but then the magnets and fins will pitch them up as they're coming beneath the opponent. So they should hit the bottoms of most targets where there's next to no armor. So these should be pretty effective. And then she also has 12 VLS cells um, with just frag missiles. In real life, I believe she fired tomahawks. Um, but I've done some goofy stuff with a variable thruster and a torpedo propeller so that even when she's very deep underwater, her move routine is basically set up to hug the ocean floor. So the torpedo propeller will be able to boost the missile out of the water, and then once it's out of the water, the radar will kick in and the uh, variable thruster and fins will guide it, guide it on the target. So, those are the two, two new vessels. They should be a decent complement to our fleet. And... Uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into the campaign. So, we are back in campaign. Um, geez, it's been a while since I've, I've played. <laughs> I gotta get back into the, the strategic mindset. But we have um, a lot of the White Flares territories under our control. And let's see, where's our... Cargo ship. Here's our cargo. Okay. Here's our cargo ship. Or our, our repair ship. So, uh, yeah, okay. So we're going to need to get all of these resource zones built. This is going to be useful. That's the Exodine. That's the main problem. 
believe that Angstrom's a submarine. No, it's not. It's just a big ship. Uh, so, our main battle line is headed over to take on the Exodine. And then I'm currently building... Uh, a Harry W. Hill. Okay, so I'm building a Spruance class over here. And then we have all these phantoms that we just built. Okay, interesting. I think I'm gonna build... Oh, we still have 540,000. I'm gonna build an Albany and then some submarines. Receiving. I mean, we are at war, and this base and hunter team is real close to our border, and I do have, like, five phantoms here just sitting around. Listening. This this looks like an opportunity for a raid. Moving out. Listening. Ooh, two for one. So I think we should be able to knock out this trade fleet as well as the base and hunter team. Yeah, the lightning hoods are very Listening. powerful, so I'm definitely going to have to rely on the phantoms a lot Listening. to do, um... Listening. Listening. To do, like, Listening. uh... I don't know, commerce Listening. rating type stuff. So I'm going to be deploying these guys, Listening. hopefully... And I think they can outrun Listening. most lightning hoods craft. Even though lightning hoods have very speedy craft. They should be Listening. okay with that. So I think I'm going to be using these phantoms a lot to snipe resource zones, knock out cargo fleets, and take down any, basically any enemy vehicles that aren't, you know, large and well armed. Listening, listening. Anyways, let's, uh, let's get into it. First battle against lightning hoods, here we go. Make sure all of these are on targeting, and what is this? Fulgrite. Oh. Oh, oh, oh my. <laughs> this, these guys like their missiles, huh? Okay, hopefully we can flare these. They don't look like... Okay, it looks like the, their missiles are mostly going for our flares. And uh, our evasion is kicking in. Oh, jeez, this is chaotic. We, uh... Uh, we did some decent damage. Looks like we disabled one of their missile turrets. Oh, this... <laughs> Yikes. <clears throat> Phantom just absolutely just ate shit. Oh, and another... Okay, so we've got two Phantoms disabled. Um, hopefully we don't have any collisions or anything. That, that actually might have been from a collision and not a missile hit, which is unfortunate. Uh, is this a laser... Oh, it's... This is a laser trap, but its detection looks super poor. Let me make sure I have this. Yeah, this is proper. Yeah, that laser on that laser craft doesn't look like it's doing a good job of actually attacking our aircraft. Ooh, dodge those. Oh, yeah. Yeah, these are definitely more of anti-ship missiles than anti-air missiles. Uh, they don't seem incredibly agile. Uh, I'm going to hop over onto this phantom so that... Rambot's repair tentacles can hopefully make themselves useful. Bit of casual strafing going on. It looks like most of the missiles here are disabled. And there we go, low health. So that just leaves uh, whatever you are, the current. Ah, uh, yes, Rambot is. Repairing. Strafing one is very nice. This is the way. Ooh, yep, the current is going out of control. A lot of our missiles actually running out of steam there. <laughs> just, just floating along alongside the target. Uh, are you? It's not AI dead or anything. I think it just has no engines left. Please, please, 
don't get involved in any collisions here. Oh yeah. Two damaged. Final missile volley, just uh, add insult to injury. So, uh, alright, resource zone captured for the loss of uh, one phantom lost and one phantom damaged. Its single repair bot is gonna uh, just take away. I need another uh, repair ship. This is this Receiving. is getting a little ridiculous. This lad is decent, but it's very slow. Receiving. Listening. So basically, I just have to hope that this Angstrom won't get involved in a fight. Listening. Against this fold right here. And I will not add these guys because one of them is a hydro bolt, and I have no method of dealing with that. Listening. 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 Alright, we're sniping another resource zone, let's get into it. Evasion on. Alright, there's an evasion as usual. And it looks like that, uh, there's a lot of small missiles coming in here. Oh, we might be going into the water here. Nope, pulled up just in time. Very nice. The initial missile barrage from the fold right head has all either been uh, flared or evaded. Change of weather, interesting. What's going on? Alright. Guns and missiles, and the Fulbright missile systems look largely inoperative. Unless, are some of them unguided? No, it looks like remote guidance. Hmm. Oh no, some of- oh, our dogfight missiles aren't even, uh, locking on. This thing has, like, no heat signature. Yeah, our, uh, <laughs> our infrared- our aim nines are just not even- not even- Attempting. Guess it's a waste of materials, but it's not that bad. I mean, we're still uh, pulverizing this poor fold, right? Honestly, these things are expensive. I wouldn't mind capturing one. This AI is literally right here. I can just walk in through the door. But I won't, because I'm not a pirate. Obviously, we don't capture things peacefully. We just obliterate them. There we go. Another resource zone is ours. Although it's not actually ours, it's just not theirs. I uh, unfortunately I had to pull the phantom that was capturing this tile. Uh, because... This guy started approaching, and that is a big ship, and it probably has lasers. Oh. Hmm, the Hydrovolt is coming. Okay, hopefully this shock... Lift if me. I attack the shock with Lift this thing that's further away, will it still pull in the Hydrovolt? No, good. Listening. Alright, this is going to be an absolute murder. Listening. Listening.
What? Where did the third bank go? Ah. Blast. Listening. All right. Listening. This is, I'm pretty sure this is the Phantom's first, uh, actual dogfight against, like, a, an enemy. Am I, am I paused? I'm fine. Okay. First dogfight against an actual enemy air superiority craft, and it's a three-on-one versus a craft that's a third of the cost <laughs> of one of these. Uh, what could go wrong? I oh, actually took a missile there. Yup. Did we just ram into that? We should we just melee that guy? Interesting. Well, who who rammed him? It was you, wasn't it? Down to 89% health. Oh well. Cliff moving we out. We are the Cliff missile. moving out. Cliff moving out. We don't need missiles when you can just bludgeon your target with your wingtips. Listening. That's Exodine. Now this is a very formidable foe, but he's about to capture our land. Receiving, so moving now. Receiving we are going to send the original battle fleet Receiving, into the now. fire. Receiving. Um, so if I, if I'm correct, I believe this is like a laser broadsider. So I Receiving. think I'm gonna orient my Receiving. ships kind of in a circle so that Receiving. he can't. Receiving. Broadside all of them. Hmm. Although if he lasers this guy, he'll be able to laser that guy Receiving. at the same time. Okay, we're gonna go we're gonna go uh Receiving. Receiving. Hook shape. Receiving. Receiving. Uh we'll be on board the Harry W. Hill. This guy's this, this Nox is going to body it right off the bat. Receiving. Alright, let's get into the fight. Ooh. Yeah, so the Exodine... Exodine... Is... Yeah, oh, he's got a front laser too. Okay, so it really doesn't matter. He'll be shooting at us no matter what. Big craft... Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is gonna be this is gonna be interesting. This is gonna get tricky. Missile laser. We can probably shoot down his missile and we have smoke, but um, the other thing too, he's obviously a hydrofoil, so our torpedoes aren't gonna be really effective. Uh, but anyways, let's get into it. Missiles away. Oh, the lasers are powering on. It looks like. Are those lands? Those don't know what's going on. A whole lot of lag. Oh, there's so much. So much sea was firing right now. Hang on a sec. That really isn't helping. But whatever. Not seeing any lasers yet. Uh, there's these little side lasers. Uh, but they, those appear to be some... Oh, here it goes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yep, yeah, that's that's a big hole in the side of our ship. It doesn't seem that accurate, though. It's kind of spreading fire all around. Hopefully it keeps targeting the superstructure. We can afford to lose detection equipment because all the other ships have it, and they're sharing sharing detection. Um, but yeah, we need, to, we need to land missiles on target. Why is this so laggy? Harpoons are away, at least one of the launchers. I think the other mount got vaporized by the laser. We are all on combat maneuver. Whole lot of cannon and missile fire going out right now. Yeah, and that, that laser. So luckily we are at fairly long range right now. And also this guy appears 
relying on missile interceptors rather than plans. So that should, um, I don't know, more of our, our APS shells are going to be getting through. We should have relatively more of our missiles getting through. This guy, I don't know if this is more of a burst laser craft or if it's lasers just have very limited firing arms because we have honestly not taken a whole lot of damage here. Those flares falling all around the Oliver Hazard Perry. <coughs> the laser, yeah, look, the laser is, is targeting right now. What is that? Is it lasering itself? A bunch of fire effects coming out there. And all of the missiles look like they're going for the Spruance. Or the, uh... The Harry W. Hill, which is Spruance class, which is nice because they just get a, a gun down immediately by the Phalanx guns as soon as they get close. There's uh, Sea Sparrows going out. I'm not sure what the, the Sea Sparrows are firing at. Oh, I guess they're, they're fulfilling their anti-missile duties. Oh no, the Phalanx on this Oliver Hazard Perry is reloading, and now it's obliterated. Yikes. Oh, and it's a pretty big EMP jolt as well. The ship should should survive though. How fast? Is 78. I guess that's not insane. I think she has engine damage as well. She doesn't look like she's doing 78 meters per second. I don't know. Maybe it's just an illusion. She's big. So here go the large missiles. These are the ones that absolutely. Oh no. Uh -huh. None of this. None of this. You stop that right now. There is enough damage being dealt without us grinding our own ships to pieces. Hopefully our, our phalanx guns can shoot down this, this large missile swarm. Oh yeah, they're getting ripped up. Some of them are getting ripped up. We might take a couple hits here. Looks like we're going to take three, two. Okay, not bad. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no ramming. No ramming. What, uh, what was the, what was the damage by that? Oh, her whole bow was ripped apart. Come on, guys. I trusted you. So trusted you. That you grabbed your comrade like this. back to it. Let's see if we're taking missile hits now. I think our, our phalanx gun is on, on reload. Oh, uh, forward, forward phalanx is... No, it's not. Forward phalanx is tracking, not firing. No, forward phalanx is firing. Fire through the gaps of the cage. Oh yeah, both phalanx is there. Okay, that's that one. Oh, this is gonna miss because it's damaged. Very nice. You have shot down the entire missile barrage. Well done. So I think I think the rear the rear gun looks completely undamaged. So I think it must have been EMP. Right now it looks like it's just a gunfight. Oh, interesting stuff going on here. She's not, no uh, low health and sinking despawn though, so we didn't even get her below 85% health, jeez.
Although Spruance's damage control or uh, Harry W. Hill's damage control is doing a pretty good job. It looks like it's prioritizing the superstructure, which is a little weird, but I guess that's what it's technically so fine by me. Yeah, I could probably stop shooting now. This thing's been dead for a long time. 33 seconds in power. Oh yeah, look at, all, look at all this heavy armor in there. This is a tough nut to crack. I think, uh, definitely need to prioritize building some new ships with more firepower. Because our defensive systems are quite good, but the offense is lacking. Alright, battle finished. I'll group these guys Receiving. up and have them repair a bit, and then I actually think I'm just gonna march them all in. Receiving. Moving now. Yeah, just Receiving. send our, our Moving now. battle Receiving. to go Moving this. now. Receiving. Moving now. 